So, uh, welcome to all of you that are present here in the room, and to you that are uh, online, uh, either in this present moment or in your present moment in later times. <laughs> so, um, my name is Dana Knutsdottir. <laughs> so, as, uh, uh, as you see, this is a fairly uh, informal, or informal meeting between Dana Michel, a dancer and a choreographer from Canada, uh, Montreal, Montreal, and uh, me, Steinu Knudsdottir, I'm the Dean of Department of Performing Arts here at IAA. Uh, with me here present in the room is uh, a group of uh, students from, from our school, uh, students of Dana, and they will probably join the uh, chat later on. But uh, the, the whole context of, of our chat here is uh, uh, the project that is uh, uh, kind of shedding light on uh, the, the concept of sustainability in a large, in a broad sense. So we are uh, looking at sustainability as uh, in artistic terms. How are you? How do you use sustainable uh, methods? Do you are you aware of sustainability uh, in any sense in your in your inner circle when you're creating? What materials are you using? What you know, how do you look at your work? Also in a professional terms, how do you sustain a career in this world? You know, what, 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 how do you operate? And maybe also how how one's work relates to the, uh, the larger uh, context, like the, the society and, and the environment. So these are big questions, mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm not asking one of them. I'm, I'm just uh, curious about you, and maybe if you, just to hear about where you come from and, and uh, how, how does it look from where you are at, you know, uh, in your practice. This yeah. Sustainability. Yeah. Okay, so I'll talk about the first uh, thing that comes to my mind because it's something that I think about a lot, uh, which is materials. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, this uh, I made a piece called Yellow Towel, which premiered in 2013. And uh, when I made it, um, I didn't have any expectation that I would do it again somehow. Um, the kind of nature of the work or how I was thinking about work at that moment um, was that I was creating a, I was just talking about this, creating a, a situation or a kind of a alternative uh, house or life um, that I would live in live. Uh, with people, and that it would just be a one-time thing. So I wasn't thinking about it until until I started touring, um, and then I started to think about the materials that I was using on stage, or the fact that, well, no, a banana is not a big deal. But I'm trying to think of, a, for instance, uh, I I I use um, marshmallow fluff <laughs> and icing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I started having a lot of guilt about these foods um, that I was using for the purposes of art. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's just kind of really bad sugar in a cream form. <laughs> it's maybe not such a big deal, but uh, yeah, I started to think about, oh shit, you know, I'm throwing away these plastic containers after every show. Um, I have no solutions. <laughs> But it's a, it's it's a thought, and I'm actually not quite. We'll see in the next performance um, how how I deal with it. But I'm I'm now quite aware of, like there's a kind of a guilt um, around these containers, uh, around the around garbage, mm -hmm. um, and also around food wasting. <laughs> Uh, but, it, you know, it's difficult to speak about it in these terms because mm -hmm. the work is kind of requiring it, so then what is waste? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
if if I'm if if it's doing a different kind of feeding mm -hmm. <laughs> than like just actual uh, like di di digestive nutritional mm -hmm. feeding is mm -hmm. is it all right to use something for a different kind of feeding? Mm -hmm. So yeah. now we're into. Uh, I think it's quite interesting. It's just about um, what what do you need in terms of creating your. Uh, work. Mm -hmm. What is needed for you? What do you need in order to make art? <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. How 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 little do you need, or what is essential and what is not? Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, uh, for instance, along uh, like quite early on in my making decision to make things. I kind of uh, made a manifesto, mm -hmm. which would be to be as light as possible. Mm -hmm. um, that is, to not make big sets that required enormous amounts of shipping, um, um, that would require an enormous amount of labor. Uh, so in a way, I, I've made it such that I I, I try to not need a lot. Um, I try to not need a lot mm. um, in order to free up the way that I work, to free up uh, moving around, mm. to be light. So I try to not need a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, then there's <laughs> other levels of needing. There's uh, to what do I need to make work? Yeah, yeah. yeah you know. I need support. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, um, I need uh, you need support from. These are such enormous questions. <laughs> <clears throat> support from your local governments mm -hmm. uh, in terms of believing in the necessity of of making art mm -hmm. and of sharing art. Mm -hmm. That's important. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you like go a little bit more micro uh, support from local theaters mm -hmm. and kind of uh, making centers mm -hmm. uh, to encourage you to make things that um, are not necessarily successful. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very big one. Yeah, that's a very very big one. Uh, if if I ask you, you know, because I know that you were into something completely different before you started dancing, mm -hmm. so it, it could be maybe uh, in in uh, marketing or you know uh, some you know kind of a, a totally another business, uh, or in business or you know this kind of. Uh, 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 so, so I'm thinking about how how come you started doing art? How you know when did you start to move uh, professionally? You know what what is this shift there? And, and uh, can you tell us just a bit about that mm -hmm. shift? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I I did a degree in business, yeah. um, and I studied in at first accounting. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I switched into marketing and human resource management and I graduated and then I worked for a couple of years I worked my first job was an account executive in an advertising agency and uh, I mean quite quickly it didn't make so much sense I mean uh, from the get-go it was always kind of now that I think of hmm, when I think about it I was always a little bit playing a role. I mean, the reason that I went into accounting is because I found that my uncle, my uncle was an accountant, and I mm -hmm. thought that he looked very professional. Mm -hmm. um, and so, as a child of of uh, immigrants who moved to Canada to provide a kind of uh, like higher level of success or higher standard of living for their children, then it seemed important that I do something that seemed quite. Um, uh, fancy. Well, <laughs> it, uh, it seemed important to do something um, that looked uh, respectable in the eyes of society. 
Uh, so when I looked at my uncle, he seemed to have a very respectable role in society. And so I kind of modeled my, uh, my career path after this look. <laughs> so in a way, I was the kind of beginning, <laughs> in a way, it was, I, it was, I was already doing performances. I was kind of performing being a proper person in society. Um, and so when I started the performance of the graduating and entering the workforce, um, yeah, the performance wasn't sustaining myself as, a, <laughs> as an actual living human in the world. It didn't, it didn't make so much sense and it actually seemed um, quite wasteful. And um, especially because I was working in business and in, in advertising where I thought, ah, you know, I can be a little bit creative and quickly it, it still all whittled down to, um, well, it whittled down to commerce and money. Mm -hmm. uh, and I couldn't relate. So, um, simultaneously, I um, met the rave world. <laughs> I, I met uh, electronic music and I, I met raving. And this, when I was in this arena, then I felt like I was actually participating in the world in a way that wasn't measurable or, um, yeah, it wasn't quantifiable, mm -hmm. um, but at least I um, f actually felt present and that something was happening. Mm -hmm. And so, essentially, I just kept needing more and more of this real living. It was on the weekend, it was real living, and during the week, it was fake living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, by chance, I, at some point, saw an ad for a contemporary dance program mm -hmm. in Montreal at Concordia University. And I called the number in the ad on a whim. And uh, this program in particular happened to be um, led by <clears throat> a, a, a woman named Sylvie Panerimo uh, and Michael Montanero. And this program was kind of known for being uh, a little bit like welcoming the misfits or like mm -hmm. quite elastic um, and uh, allowing people who had no dance or art background to kind of come and, and see. So I auditioned a year later and then I and then I got in. And I the the point the intention was just to kind of hang out for a few years and avoid put off uh, fake living for at least <laughs> a few more years and then go back to the fake living. But once you take off the goggles, <laughs> it's hard to put them back on. Mm -hmm. Well it was impossible. So yeah, so that's how I found myself. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ways that I found myself. And well, you yeah. feel like now you have a role in society doing this, because you were talking about the, the accountant had a role in society. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say that at this point, um, the thing that makes the most sense is to at least be existing in the world in a way that is um, with us. <laughs> Uh, that is aware, <laughs> uh, um, aware and uh, becoming a, an empathetic being in the world, mm -hmm. uh, a thinking, a thinking being, and I feel like that is the kind of biggest. In, if we're talking about how I contribute to society, I feel like that is potentially the biggest contribution that I can offer. I don't know, I'm kind of, I'm thinking right now about a conversation that I had with my grandmother when I was in St. Lucia, where my family is from, maybe 10 years ago. And growing up, um, I didn't really, I mean, I have only met her a few times and we didn't really have a rapport. And I, when I went back to St. Lucia after having started dance, um, I felt like our interaction was uh, more genuine and there was something like a light in her eyes that I had never seen before. Mm -hmm. Then we were actually talking and I was actually hearing her and she was hearing me and I, there was a kind of maybe more of an honesty that had instilled itself. Um, and 
this interaction kind of signaled something to me, yeah, which is that I think perhaps it can be important to, um, to, to be this, <laughs> to be living a kind of a life like this, mm -hmm. where, um, I don't know, uh, where like a, a real talk is happening, <laughs> where um, maybe like um, more challenges or that it can open up uh, different channels in conversation and in like human interaction. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm kind of uh, uh, engaged in being uh, <laughs> an engaged human. Mm -hmm. We could also talk about this as a need, yeah? Mm -hmm. This is maybe the, the kind of fundamental need mm -hmm. to, to connect in this real, you know, sense of being real. Mm -hmm. Is uh, it a core, core need, maybe? From, uh, yeah, I mean, real is a heavy word then, but like, um, it's just that it quickly becomes... I mean, living any other way quickly becomes a little bit ridiculous mm -hmm. because already, uh, you know, what does this, I say this a lot, but what, you know, what is this place? <laughs> and what are, what are we all doing here? And all, you know, all of these hats that we wear, and I'm a lawyer and okay, great. I'll go make my spaghetti. I mean, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it becomes a need to at least I, I don't know, again, I, I'm just thinking about the word uh, empathy and mm -hmm. sensitivity mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. And how, how do you relate to your audience in this sense? Because mm -hmm. they, um, uh, I presume that sometimes they come and, uh, you know, kind of buy themselves a ticket for, you know, 20 euros or 50 euros to come and see you. 50 euros. 50, I hope not. That's, 50. that's not sustainable. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure about the price, but you know, you understand that they come in and some kind, maybe a, a bit of commerce around uh, around this situation where you meet the audience. How do you engage with them uh, in this, this sense that you're uh, describing in within this context? Do you, do you feel that it is happening? It's, do you manage? Are you content with with these meetings? In terms of how much people are putting out uh, financially? No, because uh, no, uh, so I presume that you want this uh, to happen between you and your audience. You know, some kind of real contact. Mm -hmm. And uh, and um, obviously, uh, this is something that you can, you know, should be able to control. But oh. sometimes. Uh, you are uh, you. The meeting place is within something that is not there. Is maybe from the fake world or fake living, uh -huh. where they are making money and making just profit or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, th th because we we can find ourselves in a context that is not uh, uh, decided by by ourselves. Okay. Do you, do you find yourself in this context, and and how do you? Uh, I guess first I should say that it would be really, really pretentious of me to say that everyone that's not engaged in art is living a fake life that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. um, I speak very personally yeah, when I say yeah, that I um, in terms of what I need to, in terms of how I need to function yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. um, second, I will say that I also don't have the pretension, or nor do I have the desire to, um, when you say to be able to control this... Um, the meeting. The point, meeting, yeah. or, or um, like having an expectation of mm -hmm, the kind of mm -hmm, interaction mm -hmm. that's going to happen. Um, I don't, uh, it's really important for me to not have any expectation mm -hmm. at all. Um, I would say that um, the best that I can do is to um, is to offer a kind of well, uh, people who have come here today. This is uh, what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. 
and I, I'm going to really look at it and I'm going to do my hardest uh, at listening mm -hmm. to you and to me mm -hmm. and let's see what comes of that, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, yeah, so it's a moment to meet uh, groups of people that you wouldn't necessarily meet. I guess it's a kind of uh, like large scale way of meeting many people at the same time and like maybe some kind of other effort to have the kind of conversation that I have with my grandmother but in some other, mm -hmm in some other f format. <laughs> Do you feel the audience? Uh, very much so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very much so. You know, perhaps what I'm feeling, I mean, what I'm feeling obviously is quite skewed by um, like basic things like, uh, you know, the psychology of the moment, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, 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 the psychology of being one person in front of a room of strangers. Um, but I allow all of that to, to infiltrate the choices that I make mm -hmm. and, and how I proceed. Um, um, uh, yeah, so, you know, some, it's obviously possible that what I'm feeling is not actually what's happening because also it's, um, it's you know, for instance, maybe 100 people, individual people having individual experiences. So sometimes there can be a connection with one particular person, maybe if I see them. But also there's like, what is the, what is the sum of a lot of different energy, and how do you interact with the sum of a lot of different people having a lot of different thoughts mm -hmm. and reactions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and here we also are more than us two. And if you have any, if you have any questions or comments, uh, you're free to to uh, do that. Also, the people that are uh, online, uh, we have a, a special a kind of a, a window where we can uh, we can ask questions. So if you have any uh, anything to uh, comment on or or add, so pl please feel free. It's quite informal. And I have one question because I really uh, appreciate what you said about this combination of, I think you said trying or longing for not having any expectations, <laughs> plus the um, possibility to, to be and listen, to hear what's happening. So I was wondering in the context of sustainability, <laughs> what you, um, I don't know if you can talk about the need or but what you do to create your space that this is possible because um, that's for me always a tricky <laughs> yeah. To find that. yeah. I, I kind of know it for, for performing but like in, in the preparation mm -hmm. or like in the work of in the process itself. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in that how you do that. In the preparation, in the process. Well, yeah, perhaps it, there's no difference for you because but I'm, I'm kind of dividing it. But mm -hmm. Perhaps it's, there's no yeah. difference. Yeah. In a way, I would say that there's like maybe no difference because I don't do any. Well, I always say that I don't do anything specific, but Isabel and I were just talking about the fact that I probably do a whole whack of very specific things that I'm not naming. Um, I would say, in fact, that I'm, I, uh, my sustainability practices are terrible, uh, really terrible. I would say that I'm, I'm not making a sustainable format for myself at all. <laughs> And I was talking about this with a couple of artists who came to work in Montreal uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, maybe I'm going off topic, but I'll just go with this thought. Um, and we were talking about exactly how, uh, how do you make it such that you can 
do this thing over and over again and be available to like this like the, the performance moment and to people and um, one of the fellows was saying you know for me it's important to uh, really have to like shut a certain door you know like I think we were having a we were giving feedback on what they had just presented um, there was a certain level of of criticality and afterwards I, I went and I said to him you know I hope I hope that it was okay or, or welcome or whatever what I said and he said don't worry about it you know because at this point in my career it's been really important to, to have a certain shell otherwise I wouldn't be able to continue doing this kind of work um, I have to have a kind of shell to not let it matter and when he said that, it really, really struck me because I realized that for me, it's really the opposite. I really go out of my way to um, not <laughs> to not have a. Sh it scares me to have a shell because then I feel like, how in the hell can I possibly listen if I have some kind of armor? Um, and I I can't remember if we had a conversation or if I had a conversation with myself. But wondering, I'm like, oh, am I eventually just going to erode my systems to the point where my nerves are bare and then I'll just have to be like, well, I guess that's it for me in performance because I've, I've worn my systems out. Um, for now, I say that that's what I'm going to go with. And when I get down to being threadbare at the nerves, I guess I will bow out. But I, I can't come up with a different way of doing it other than just... Uh, tapping into all of all of the my possibilities, um, I can't I can't do it def with defenses. Um, and this is what I'm asking because I. Uh, I'm sorry, you have to speak up loud because uh, I can't hear you. Um, I totally love that because that's I think what I feel in the art is needed because it, for me it's stupid to do the art if we have the same arm or shelves like like in the outside world. So this way I'm asking, or I'm thinking a lot about like what circumstance, environment, universities, production houses, um, families <laughs> can bring in that, that this is possible and you don't have to go for yeah. the shelf system. Yeah, so I would say, yeah, now um, what, what helps is exactly what, you, what you're saying is okay. If I have to think about how can I how can I possibly make it okay, I need I need to surround myself with uh, I need to surround myself with love. Having my my child is very very important. It's very grounding. It's very uh, important for me to um, step out of uh, <laughs> the machine sometimes. And, and it happens on a regular basis because I don't have a choice. When he needs dinner, then I have to step out of the system and, you know, make a dinner. <laughs> um, so that becomes a kind of sustainability practice. Um, I should do things like meditating, <laughs> which I try a little bit. Mm. Uh, There's maybe some meditation in uh, preparing dinner. <laughs> That's, I actually realized that I, 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 I do a lot of meditating because I move quite slowly and I spend a lot of time on things like hanging my laundry mm. um, and these kinds of things are really important to me. Actually, they're actually really important yeah. to me. Um, not having a dryer at home is a sustainability practice because then I have to, ha I have to it hang everything <laughs> and that takes a certain amount of time and that removes me from a certain kind of a, um, a rhythm that exists. It, 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 it enforces um, a slowing down. Um, so maybe like s somehow in everyday life um, there's kind of a, a slowing down that's instilled that gives me a little bit of uh, space and remove uh, from the insistence of <laughs> being a productive person. Anyone? I want to ask you a bit about uh, um, the uh, the relation to the audience, because we were talking about a, a sense of purpose or, or a role in society, and 
uh, some kind of a need to be real. H how do you, I'm interested in the connection to the audience. Uh, what you know? What do you what, what what are your thoughts on audiences? Just as a you know, who are they, and, and are they a specific type of people that you want to address, or are you interested in in con, you know connection with whomever, or you know what what are your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's definitely a whomever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm thinking about. Um, Early on in my grant writing, um, in grant writing, uh, and there's always this question of how, like, how are you serving society, and how, mm. like, how are you? And I would say, well, I'm I'm aiming to touch the largest amount of people uh, with no uh, economic uh, barriers, with with no discrimination. Mm. This this is this is my my goal and. You know, I don't know. At a certain point, I realize, well, it's obviously a lie, <laughs> uh, because if I continue to only uh, share the work that I do in specific spaces, I'm automatically there's automatically a very large percentage of the population that doesn't have direct access to my work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I might be going off on a tangent, but then this is when I start to consider my work being quite broad um, and the importance of it extending beyond uh, the stage and what I'm doing uh, in art making, how it affects me as a human and how I then walk around um, on the streets mm -hmm. or wherever and how it can... Uh, Again, this thing of what kind of uh, human existence do I have mm -hmm. and how it can affect then whatever random person that I see. Oh, what am I saying? Where, where am I going? No, it makes really, yeah, it makes a I, sense. Am I going? Yeah, yeah I think so. Follow. It's also just when, when does art happen and what is your practice and what not, you know, because you do yeah. a lot of things in your life, like being yeah. a mother and... And yeah. where do you st you know where do you cease to be a where do you cease to be a mother and become an artist or are you artist all the time and mother mm -hmm. all the time? Yeah, it's also just the in way way in which you um, you know wh when are you putting up the labels? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think it's a striving for a, 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 a holistic living and for a blending and for mm -hmm. for letting things bleed into each other so that in a way okay then maybe maybe I am uh, still striving for this thing of making my work uh, available to the largest amount of people possible if mm -hmm. I um, am trying to let everything uh, or uh, removing the barriers so that everything can affect everything so that whoever I do come across mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to use as benefiting from my work, but mm -hmm. um, that I'm engaging in a in a in a kind of a way. Has it changed throughout your career? In, in which places you present your work? Are you always? Is it you know? I'm just really curious about where you are meeting the audience. Mm -hmm. Is it, it is it different? And has it changed? For sure, when I um, started touring more, um, most of my time is spent in, I guess, Western Europe, mm. mostly, mostly, mm -hmm. yeah. And a similar type of venues and... and uh... Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, there's a d tiny bit of touring in mm -hmm. Canada and uh, some in the US and then mainly uh, Western Europe. Mm -hmm. So this is where I'm encountering, mm -hmm. this is where I'm encountering people. Mm -hmm. And is there a difference? Is there a difference? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Can you describe the difference? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the, the car, the... There's a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, but the difference is, um, you know, uh, Western Europe is a lot older than, uh, or the, the relationship to art is a lot older. Or, hmm, I would say that um, the relationship to art is perhaps more mature. I use that like really in, in like length of time mm -hmm. historically in Western Europe than it is in Can Canada or the US and so uh, the way that people are uh, approaching how, um, how they look at work uh, is quite different. For instance, um, I don't know, I'm thinking about something like in France where uh, it's it's quite normal to go and, and to see performances or to see contemporary performances. They're um, uh, cultural houses in the smallest town and so you can yeah. have, um, yeah, you uh, everybody can go and, and see your work and won't necessarily be shocked, where, whereas um, I don't tour a lot in Canada because it, my work is, is deemed to be too... Uh, too crazy mm -hmm. um, to be kind of uh, swallowable. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting, that's one thing, mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, I mean, specifically with the past couple of works that I've made where I'm dealing with identity and, um, in a large sense, my identity is a, as a black woman, mm -hmm. and the conversations that are had in the U.S. become quite different than they are in Canada than they are in Europe, um, especially in the past several years where um, there are movements that have, that have heated up and rightly so, and thank goodness. Um, and so the conversation becomes a lot, lot more um, axed politically than mm. when I uh, come to Europe and then there's like uh, a focus on perhaps the aesthetics uh, mm -hmm. uh, concepts um, I'm, I'm like kind of <laughs> I'm thinking of Google Maps it's like uh -huh. uh, uh, it's like street view in the yeah. States versus uh, uh, like the more zoomed out view yeah. mm -hmm. in, uh, in Europe Gen generally, of mm -hmm. course, there's mm -hmm. exceptions. But in terms of relevance of your work, mm -hmm. is there a difference? Do you feel it's more uh, relevant in, in Canada or in Europe? Or, you know, because it doesn't need to be uh, follow what the trend that you're describing. So mm -hmm. maybe the relevance is, is it equal or? Um, Probably. Talking yeah, I mean, about I, identity I, is, a, is a global thing. Yeah, I guess I, 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 I can't... Uh... <laughs> from your point of view, yeah. I'm not asking you to be, a, you know, yeah, how, as a how, politician, it's just from... <laughs> how, how, am I, how am I relevant? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I guess I can't have the pretension to answer that question, no. and that it's going to be quite individual for each person. I mean, I could answer, but I, I feel like an asshole. Can I say that on these uh, talks? <laughs> <laughs> I just did. <laughs> so we have a question? Yeah, we have a question from Olga. I don't want to... Oh, there's no. online questions, yes. really technological. Yes, uh, I don't want to embarrass her or me by pronouncing her last name. Uh, she's asking, is it sustainable thinking that artists should reach the largest amount of people possible? And then she states, isn't that a kind of capitalist thought process? Okay, so I mean, okay, uh, again, I'll speak for myself. So when I was talking about this, um, I want to reach the largest amount of people, I, <laughs> the kind of thought that I didn't finish saying eventually was that, oh, I did kind of finish, but it's also qu it's, it's quite naive. I think I was being quite naive, and I think I was also saying what... <sighs> Ooh, could be killing myself right now, but I think I was saying what the granting bodies wanted to hear, because that's what the granting bodies want to hear, that um, their tax dollars are serving a purpose, um, and that if you're going to get this money from the government, that you're going to give value to a lot of people. Okay. 
Um, is it cap? Touching on what I said most recently, which is that um, realistically, the, these like large amounts of people that I'm potentially touching, well, like maybe 80% of it is uh, happening in the grocery store when like maybe I'm gonna have a conversation with the cashier <laughs> that lasts a little bit longer. Mm. Um, and that's maybe a little bit more humane rather than just like ha handing over my cash and taking the loaf of bread home. So in that respect, not capitalistic, <laughs> if that made any sense at all. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can't speak to that generally right now. Mm -hmm. But for sure, I mean, for sure, it's, uh, for sure it's happening for, you know, groups that are making uh, large pieces for humongous theaters. Yeah, it becomes, it can become a, mm -hmm. hu a huge engine. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that's something I can't speak to because I'm not really engaged in that. Uh, can I ask you something about, you know, maybe um, touches up on this or maybe as a continuation? Because you were talking about this meaningful uh, uh, kind of moment with your grandmother and this sense of being, you know, kind of being uh, in... Um, uh, uh, having this real contact and uh, communication is is it something that you and I'm kind of maybe repeating myself are you searching for this with your audiences this kind of person you somehow a personal experience yeah yeah but not exactly like this but um yeah I'm just I guess I'm I'm just interested in in in, in shedding, in, in, um, in removing barriers mm. in order to, to, to have some, uh, to, to make the situation more porous. Um, because yeah, without this porosity, it starts to, it stops, it starts to, quickly not make a lot of sense for me. Mm -hmm. I think that's as specific as I can, I can get with my desires in terms of what kind of interaction I, I would just, I'm just would like to have a, a porous interaction. Mm -hmm. um, because that's uh, what I, what I appreciate. I mean, it's it, like, it's quite rudimentary, I guess my, my motivations, but um, this is what I enjoy when I, when I'm watching your performance is this porosity um, and the space um, to, to make of things what, what I need in that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, we we uh, are going to stop very soon. Mm -hmm. So I just want to ask you a bit about what you're currently working on. Mm -hmm. can, can you tell us a bit about what is happening now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this week I've been here <laughs> with uh, these uh, five lovely humans. That was a very big. Uh, that was a very big part of uh, work mm -hmm. for me. That was very important for me. Um, so that's what was. Ha that's how it's happening right now. It's ending. And after this, I um, I'm working with Benoit Lachambre, who is. Um, a performer and a choreographer who's based in Montreal. Uh, so I've been commissioned to make a solo on him. Mm -hmm. So that premieres in March. So in a couple of weeks, we get back to work. And then after that, I, well, after right now, I'm, I'm working on a new solo uh, for myself, mm -hmm. which will happen next year. Yeah. Okay. And working on being a, a mother. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a big one. Yeah. That's a really big one. <laughs> and and w yeah, working on being more availability uh, um, availability. I'm working on being a more uh, available uh, human to myself and to uh, the people I love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Thank you, Dana. If there is no more questions, I just want to thank you ever so much to, for being here with us in IAA and also here online forever and ever. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.